there. Welcome to Africa News, the top stories on the continent. The Central African Republic sees the worst violence since the UN force took over peacekeeping duties last month. At least seven people are killed in renewed violence. As African leaders criticise a slow international response to the Ebola crisis, we bring you an exclusive report on the struggle to contain the virus in DR Congo. And with the race for the Nobel Peace Prize wide open, we take a look at the Congolese gynaecologist Dennis Mukwege, who's tipped as a possible winner. But first to our top story. At least uh, seven people have been killed and uh, several injured as fresh violence erupts in the Central African Republic. Officials say it's the worst violence since the UN force took over peacekeeping duties last month. Gunfire and explosions were heard throughout the night and into this morning amid increasing unrest between rival militia. Over 5,000 people have been killed in religious violence since last year when a coup plunged the nation into turmoil. Nicolas Germain reports. For more than a month, Bongi was calm, but violence erupted once again this week. On Tuesday evening, men threw grenades on the crowd. A suspect was caught and lynched to death. He was a Muslim from the PK-5 district. Since then, there have been clashes and several people have been killed. It's the first wave of violence since UN peacekeepers took over from the African Union force last month. Many on the streets of the capital called on the transitional president to step down. I say to our president, she's not up to the job of governing our country. They protested here and broke all the shops. And there was no reaction from the government. We citizens of this country are deeply sad. We've had enough of this violence. We call on the president to step down. She's incompetent. Even the two groups who've been fighting since last year in the country, the ex Seleka and the anti-Balaka, now agree on one point. They both call on Catherine Sambapanza to resign. She's come under fire because of the current insecurity, but also because several million dollars given by Angola to help the nation appear to have vanished. The government has promised to give a detailed explanation about this case on Friday. Well, staying with the Central African Republic, Benedict Moran is in the capital, Bangui. Earlier, he described conflicting versions on why fresh violence has erupted. If you speak to both sides, uh, the community inside the PK5 neighborhood, which uh, is the majority Muslim district and where the city's last Muslims live, and if you speak with the Onti Balaka uh, that are manning the checkpoints going into that district, they have polar opposite views about how this conflict started. The Antibalika are telling me that the Muslim, uh, as the report stated, and this is confirmed by the humanitarian community and uh, international peacekeepers, that uh, a Muslim man threw, the, threw a grenade which led to a tit-for-tat revenge attack between the two communities and escalating to where we are right now. Speaking to people inside the PK-5 neighborhood in Bangui, they say that they are they have no choice but to defend themselves against uh, anti balaka attacks. They are the ones that started it. They've been encircling the neighborhood for uh, many days now, and they will refuse to disarm despite calls by the international community to do so, as well as calls from the interim uh, president. Away from Bangui, African leaders have criticised the international community for a slow response to the Ebola crisis. During a meeting of a major donors at the World Bank, leaders of the worst affected countries, Sierra Leone, Guinea and Liberia, called for more treatment clinics, healthcare workers and funding. Ebola has killed nearly 4,000 people in West Africa in the worst outbreak on record. Thanks to this increasing mobilization of the international community, we were able to make progress in fighting this disease. However, there are enormous challenges that remain since this disease has already reached a toll of 3,000 victims. Well, Anthony Banbury, the uh, head of the UN emergency response team on Ebola, has just visited at Liberia, Sierra Leone and Guinea. Earlier, he told uh, France 24 about the impact that the epidemic is having on West Africa. There's very clearly uh, an urgency to, to act and to act fast. The crisis is a very complex one. It's impacting all the sectors of society, not just the health sector, but uh, the economy very severely. Uh, the health sector, 
the education sector, food security, and the response that needs to be put in place by the international community working with the government is also uh, very complex and must be multidimensional. Staying with Li uh, Liberia, it has uh, suspended nationwide elections and the uh, latest measure to combat the Ebola epidemic. Organisers say logistically polls will be impossible to go ahead without uh, endangering lives. Well, in the Democratic Republic of Congo, a new case of the Ebola virus has been confirmed. The victim is a young boy who was already under surveillance at an Ebola clinic in the remote town of Lokalia. With uh, no roads or telephones, health officials are visiting neighbouring villages on motorcycle to raise awareness of the deadly epidemic. Medi Medeb and Leah-Lisa Vesterhoff report. Two months after the start of the outbreak, Doctors Without Borders comes back to this village, one of the first hit by Ebola. Come on, ladies, don't hide. Ask questions. If you don't, you'll talk nonsense afterwards. He in Ituku, the last person with Ebola died a month ago. But the trauma caused by the epidemic is still alive. Honorine lost her husband. Of course we were scared. We had to burn all the clothing of our loved ones who died with Ebola. I'm afraid of this epidemic. How many of us died? Getting prevention messages across was no easy task, as initially people were very scared. Initially, the people would flee to the forest when we came. Ebola was taboo. They were saying that all those who went to a treatment center would die. But as soon as we increased awareness, they understood. Now, as soon as the first symptoms, like fever or headache, show up, they come to the treatment center, even with their kids. To fulfill their mission deep in the rainforest, the humanitarians have no other choice than to use bikes as there are no roads or telephone to help them find the Ebola patients in this very isolated area. Uh, we are in a very remote area of the jungle, so a lot of these areas uh, have no roads, uh, so there are no, there's just a footpath that goes to these villages, and they're very remote, uh, often 40 to even 80 kilometers away. But uh, these people are very migratory, um, and because it's so remote, it's very difficult to track individuals. Um, we may not have the large numbers that West Africa has, but we have the uh, difficulties of the, our, the current environment, which is like the jungle, which is so dense. The war against Ebola is not over. This child, for example, diagnosed with a hemorrhagic fever, is still fighting against the disease. And finally, the race for the Nobel Peace Prize 2014, set to be announced on Friday, has seldom been so unpredictable. Congolese gynaecologist Dennis Mukwege, who's uh, treated female victims of sexual violence for over two decades, is on the list of nominees. He founded and works in Pansy Hospital in Bukavu, DR Congo, where he's treated thousands of women, sometimes performing up to 10 surgeries a day. Dr. Mukwege, the tireless defender of rape victims in the Democratic Republic of Congo, will he be the next Nobel Peace Prize laureate? His name is up there with Pope Francis Edward Snowden and 278 other candidates. It's not the first time the Congolese gynecologist has been nominated. His struggle is hailed the world over. He has treated rape victims and carried out 40,000 operations here at the Ponzi Hospital in Bukavu. Women, teenagers, little girls, aggressed and mutilated by armed groups in Kivu. He told us about their ordeal in 2005. These are women who, after being raped, were mutilated. Their genital organs were destroyed with knives or other sharp objects, or even with firearms. Dr. Mukwege's dedication almost cost him his life. Two years ago, he survived an assassination attempt and went into exile in Belgium for a few months. He returned to Bukavu in January 2013, where the population reserved him a warm welcome over the 20 miles from the airport to the city. Men and women need to unite today and stand up against rape and war. He has won numerous awards for his work, like the King Baudouin Prize here in Belgium. And every award is an opportunity for him to remind his audience of the horrors these women go through.
Toutes les victimes sont violées avec une brutalité All the victims have been raped with unbelievable brutality. Those who manage to survive reach the hospital in a state of incredible physical and psychological damage. The winner of this year's Nobel Peace Prize will be announced on Friday in Sweden. Far, very far away from Bukavu. Okay, you're up to date. More international news coming up next.